I have created for you the best Italian lunch summer menu. Oh yeah, this is beautiful, refreshing, light. It's hot outside and you do want something that is not too heavy. Something easy to eat, but also yummy. Beautiful. Three dishes. We have an antipasto, we have a pasta, and we have a dessert. The antipasto for today, I think is the king of summer antipasti, is the caprese salad, done the right way. Tomato mozzarella salad, beautiful, that you must have in summer. It's because the, the tomatoes are summer, uh, the mozzarella uh, brings the best flavors out in summer. And this is the recipe for you. Caprese salad time! Remove the top part, and what we do is we want to cut into thick slices, okay? Like this. This is how thick my mozzarella will be, and I want the mozzarella and the tomato to have the same size, okay? The same size. This is the perfect size, okay, for the tomato. Let's keep doing it. You don't want to use the green there, so remove it. Remove this part. Remove it. And now we slice. So I want every slice to be the same thickness of my buffalo mozzarella. Beautiful. See, this is perfect. That's a perfect slice. Perfect slice for a perfect caprese. Look at this tomato. Look how juicy this is. Look how juicy this tomato is. Now I'm going to cut the mozzarella with a nice knife. And this is what we do. We cut the slice. One, look how creamy this is, look how creamy. And I want to do the same thickness of my tomato, okay? Don't forget, same thickness. Let's see how many slices we get out of this. Oh, beautiful buffalo mozzarella. Now, another good knife you can also use to cut the mozzarella is the same knife you use for the tomato. And look how perfect it is, you know? Cut it perfectly, just like that. And we want to cut the same slices, okay? The same thickness that we have for the tomatoes. Look how beautiful it is. Oh, wow. And now it's time to assemble the caprese. So what we do is we get a nice slice of tomato, we put oregano and salt, and then we get a nice good looking leaf of basil and then we put the buffalo mozzarella on top and then we do it again tomato slice oregano and salt and we put the basil leaf on top when you put the basil leaf you want to make sure it sticks out it looks better and here we go again beautiful tomato oh my god i can't wait to have it seriously i can't wait basil and the buffalo mozzarella here we can add one more tomato, a little bit of oregano as always, a basil leaf, and the buffalo mozzarella. Now we do the middle part. The middle part we're gonna have tomato, tomato, and again tomato, just like that. Beautiful oregano on top, and a beautiful basil over here. Put four basil and we put the rest of the buffalo mozzarella here now last but not least we need to put the extra virgin olive oil all over our salad okay so we want this the extra virgin olive oil to go on top of the mozzarella on top of the cheese yeah beautiful beautiful this is what we want Time to plate this beautiful caprese salad. So the question is, how much can you eat? Huh? How much of it can you eat? Now, first, let's make sure the tomato is top quality. And I know already it is. Let's have a little bit of mozzarella here. Let's make sure these two ingredients love each other. Let's make sure they do. Mmm, mmm. Moist, artisan buffalo mozzarella. Beautiful tomato. I got them from the market. The tomatoes come from Griffith, an area of farmers here in Australia. And 
super super juicy guys the tomato is so important look at that the italian flag into my mouth mm. Mm. the basil you don't need balsamic vinegar here you don't need balsamic vinegar because these ingredients are fantastic if you put balsamic vinegar you're covering you take over the flavors that you want the simple flavors that you want mm, mm. Mm. then we need spaghetti al pomodoro spaghetti al pomodoro made with fresh cherry tomatoes and basil i love this dish it's so summery and you need to enjoy it and this is the recipe for you ladies and gentlemen today we are making pasta al pomodoro and look at this fresh cherry tomatoes and basil pasta oh first thing to do guys please get those cherry tomatoes and let's cut them in half okay cherry tomatoes we want to get the juice out of the tomatoes which is going to turn into sauce for our pasta okay so you do need to cut the tomatoes enough okay how do we start of course we start with the extra virgin olive oil put about let's say four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil you got two options here you can do this to your garlic and just put it in there so you release all the flavors in the oil or you can do what i do i basically like to crush my garlic because i like the flavors of crushed garlic in my sauce Basically one garlic per person. Like if I make pasta agli olio. Let's add the tomatoes inside. Oh yes. Oh yes. Look how juicy these cherry tomatoes are. Look how wonderful. Let's put a nice generous amount of salt and pepper. And here we go. Yum. Now we do want to wait for the juice to come out, okay? So cook it on a medium-low heat, okay? And take your time and stir every now and then. Now, see, when you get to this point that the beautiful juice is coming out, see? See the juice there? It's coming out, okay? So it's not a bit dry at the bottom, I guess. It's more saucy. What we do is we put the basil, okay? So what I do, I put the whole thing here. We break the stalk so the flavors come out and just put it in there, okay? We're just adding the basil now for the extra flavors. It's all about the flavors, okay? Guys, after a few minutes, you will see that the tomatoes are getting softer. And what you can do to help so the juice come out, you press on them. What we do is we remove the basil. And this is what we're going to do. This is credit goes to Suzanne, my wife Suzanne. Great idea. Okay, so guys, what we're going to do now, very easy. We're going to blend this wonderful juice here and these tomatoes but when i say blend you don't want to be too rough you want to be very gentle and quickly blend okay the best thing to do actually would be to crush with your hands it's a bit too hot to do it uh, or you know you can just use a crush tomato crusher and so basically guys what we want to do here we want to do this very gently very quickly but not for too long one two three that's it we're done this is ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. I want to show you what you get, okay, when you do this. Creamier, more sauce, and look, you've still got enough cherry tomatoes, you know, to decorate your pasta, but look at that. Look at this beautiful sauce. How can you go wrong with this, okay? You can't not go wrong with this. So, it's time to cook the spaghetti. To cook the spaghettoni quadrati pasta, what we need is a large pot with water, one nice tablespoon of sea salt, okay? Put it there. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to twist and put the pasta in there. And when you do this, make sure you put it down. So the water is boiling and this is helping to make the pasta softer. The water is so hot, you know? So you do that for the first 30 seconds, move them around. Okay, so now this pasta, takes 13 minutes to cook. Always read the instruction on the packet. And I'm gonna cook it for 13 minutes in boiling water. In the meantime, while the pasta cooks, let's finish our sauce, okay? So what we do is we put the sauce back on the pot here. 
on a medium low heat actually at this point i would say go very very low but we don't want to stress the soles look at that and what we do is we're going to break the basil in there break it tear the basil with your hands why because the flavors will go all in the sauce. If you cut the basil on the chopping board, what's gonna happen is you are releasing all the flavors on the chopping board. And make sure you put it on low heat. Low heat, please, okay? Low heat. We don't wanna stress our beautiful cherry tomatoes. Mmm, look how nice it looks. Put more basil in there. And let's keep some basil for decoration, okay? Just keep some to decorate this magical dish. Ah, oh. and the flavors are there. This is ready to be served. Look how creamy, come on have a look, look. Look how beautiful this is. Can you believe I made this sauce in 10 minutes? Hmm? Look how beautiful. Uh, just the two of us. You give me the sauce, I give you the love. Just the two of us. I'm going to eat you. Okay guys, before we get the pasta out, let's get a mug of pasta water which we might need it, okay, when we mix the pasta with the sauce. All right, let's get this beautiful spaghetti. Yum. Go straight in the sauce. Doesn't matter if you get some pasta water, eh? Actually, it's, it's better. Just get it. That's why I like to get the pasta with my tongs. I don't try not to use the colander. What we want to do now, guys, and this is very important, is we want to mix our ingredients with the pasta. It's such an important thing. Don't put the pasta in the plate with nothing on it, and then you just put the sauce on top. The pasta needs to make love with the sauce, okay? It's so, so important. And that's what we're doing right now. All right, what we do now is we're gonna put a little bit of pasta water in there, just a little bit. Toss, 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 toss. Beautiful. We're almost ready to serve. Just before we serve, I like to put some raw extra virgin olive oil to give more flavor. Last but not least, we need to add more basil on top, please. More basil. Now, if you wanna add pecorino, parmigiano, this is the time for you to do it. Right now, you do it, you toss it. Let's put a little bit more extra virgin olive oil. Toss it and serve. And this is how you make pasta al pomodoro. Oh yes, this is it. Pasta al pomodoro with basilico, fresh basil and fresh cherry tomatoes. It's important guys for us now to plate this wonderful plate of spaghetti. Ah, look how important it is to combine all the ingredients together, huh? You can't miss the most important step in any pasta recipe. You do have to combine all the ingredients. It is a must. If you don't do it, just remember that I'm watching you. I'm in your kitchen, always watching you. Let's put some sauce on top and sprinkle basil everywhere. And you can add pecorino and parmigiano if you love it. Now the final touch, let's sprinkle some nice basil all over. And we can also put a little bit of basil here. And here is how you make pasta al pomodoro. Yes, beautiful, silky, creamy. Oh, that's a big portion, but I think I can do it. I have a big mouth. Mmm. 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 You can pair these dishes with a white wine, I recommend. Why? Because we got tomato and mozzarella, and I think the red gets a bit too much, um, and the white really keeps you in, or oh, maybe the rosé, a nice rosé. A rosato from Abruzzo or a rosé from France or whatever you like um, and it's nice too because it cleans your palate that white cold wine you know and the dessert I chose is a strawberry tiramisu oh yeah very summery strawberry tiramisu oh, it's so good it's so good 
that you need to try and then you need to tell me, oh my God, Vincenzo, you were right. Of course, there is no coffee in it, okay? There's no coffee. That strawberry tiramisu with mint, it's a life-changing experience. And this is the recipe for you. Strawberry tiramisu, oh yes. Nice, refreshing, oh, beautiful. So what we do is we wanna remove the green part from the strawberries and then you can cut them in half but because I want to cook it faster, I cut them in half again. So I get four pieces out of one strawberry. Um, and I think the smaller you make them, the easier it is to cook. Now we're going to cook the strawberries on a medium high heat. Okay, put them in a pot, stir. Now we're going to put five tablespoons of white sugar and five tablespoons of water. Two, three, four and five now stir what the sugar and the water are gonna do they will help to get the juice out of the strawberries okay so at this point let's get five more tablespoons one two three four and five and keep stirring as you can see we have more liquid we have more juice so let's put again more five more tablespoons of water. The reason why I'm doing this gradually is because I want to see how the strawberry is reacting. So basically, when the strawberries are completely covered, swimming in uh, juice, we can get the juice out of the pot, okay? At the moment, as you can see, there's, they're still not covered, okay? So I want them to be completely covered by the water. So again, five more tablespoons. So, so far, I used about 20 tablespoons of water. Let's wait five minutes to see if the strawberries is releasing more juice and then we might be okay. Okay, as you can see, the strawberries are releasing more liquid. See, can you see the strawberries are completely covered by the water. We got the foam. I want to put five more tablespoons of water, which is going to be 25 tablespoons of water in total. Two, three, four, and five. Now we'll give a quick stir. Let's check if the strawberries are nice and soft. They are nice and soft, which is good. So what we do now, we're gonna take the juice out of the pot. Okay, now let's get a strainer. Put a strainer in a nice deep bowl. And what we're gonna do here is, we're going to get the juice out of these beautiful strawberries. And here we go. And this is a strawberry juice for the Savoyardi. Get a hand blender and we blend the strawberries. And here we go. Oh, wow, 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 beautiful. Look how creamy it is. Now let's cover the strawberry coolie with the glad wrap. And now we place both juice and strawberry coolie in the fridge. So they get nice and cold. Now we need to make the mascarpone cream for the tiramisu. So we need to get the eggs and what we do is we divide the egg yolk and the egg white, okay? So here I'm gonna put the egg white and the egg yolk. And again, the white, the egg, egg white and the yolk. Now, usually I like to make tiramisu with raw eggs because when we use the electric whisk, we're actually warming them up and it's kind of safe from salmonella. But if you are not 100% sure, you're worried about salmonella, this is what we can do, okay? So what we do is we boil the water, just a little bit of water in the pot, switch off the cooktop. Now we put the egg yolks there, put the five tablespoons of sugar there, and we mix. After about one minute on the steam, we want to be safe. We don't want to have scrambled eggs. Let's remove the egg from the cooktop. All right, now let's finish it off at room temperature. See when you get this nice thick egg cream. Make sure you get all of it. It's like a zabayone right now. Do this. 
Now that the egg yolks are ready, the cream is ready, we can do the white. We do the whites uh, last, so once we finish it, we can mix it straight away with the egg yolks. We place the egg white on top. We want to reach the temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, okay? No more than that, otherwise this will, will cook. And now, let's do, let's quick, quick, quickly beat them. Okay, guys. After one minute of doing this, just to be safe, remove it because the eggs are nice and warm now. And now we're going to finish it off without the heat, okay? All right, all right, all right. 500 grams of mascarpone in this one. You always have some mascarpone stuck to your spoon. So, you try it. Mm. I love it. All right, now let's mix this mascarpone with the eggs. Come on. Slowly, slowly. Make sure they make love together. Hello. And now we go faster. Look at that. This is beautiful thick cream. Ah, this is what we want for a tiramisu. Look how wonderful. Look how wonderful this is. Now let's put the egg white inside. And we are going to mix it and fold it with a spatula, okay? Do not use the mixer here. Just like this. Beautiful. And here is the cream for our tiramisu. Look how easy this is. Hmm? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add about five more tablespoons of water so that we dilute this strawberry sauce so we can get more out of it, okay? Here we go. Ready to assemble the tiramisu. This is where the magic begins. Come on, let's do it. Now we're going to dunk the Savoyardi in the strawberry juice. What I like to do after that, I wanna put the part with sugar at the bottom, facing the bottom of the Pyrex. Now, we are going to dunk them in for about four to five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. The reason is because the coffee takes only three seconds because it's more runny. This juice is not as runny and needs about four or five seconds, okay? And we place it at the bottom. So, let's put this beautiful cream. Look how beautiful and thick it is. Well, let's start. And here we go. Ooh, wow. Now it's time to add the strawberry coolie here, okay? So just get a spoon to help you. I think it's a bit easier. And what we do is we create lines just like this. So basically every portion that you serve is enough coolie. Here we go. Perfect. Now we do one line in the middle, do one line here, do one more here. Mm, that's a generous amount. Perfect. We got enough. Now this is my favorite part, the white chocolate. Oh my friend, the white chocolate is going to take this to the next level. Yes. Come on, white chocolate. White chocolate. I love it. If you don't like white chocolate, you can go for milk chocolate or anything else. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. But I do want this to be a bomb of happiness. Now let's completely cover the tiramisu with glad wrap, plastic wrap. Now, if you want to get the best result out of this tiramisu, you leave it in the fridge overnight, overnight. You want this on the same day, at least four, five hours, at least. But honestly, the best result you get after two days. The day after or the day after again, it's gonna be the best you can get. So if you can do it the day before, it's best. Now in the fridge overnight. See you tomorrow, baby. Thank you so much. Can't wait to eat you. Look at this beauty. Look at that. Hello, strawberry tiramisu. See, all set. Beautiful and set, see, that's what you want. Mm. Now guys, it's time for us to decorate it. Why I didn't do it before? I didn't do it before because I wanted this to set. 
Now we can put the strawberries on top. What do we do? We get the mint and we just put it here everywhere. It has to look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> now, as I told you before, guys, we need to follow the line. See, I created this line here. So I can cut this, I can cut the slices. So let's go. This way. The first slice always break. I'm gonna go underneath this. Perfect. All right, let's get the first part out, which is probably what I'm going to eat because it always breaks, never looks fantastic. But let's get it out. Oh, it looks very nice and moist. It looks nice and moist. Beautiful. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it's moist. Oh, yes, it's moist. Let's get the second part out. Oh, yes, guys, it's moist. Oh, hello, strawberry tiramisu. Hello. Oh, I can't wait to have it. You can see the biscuit, it's white. You think, oh my God, that biscuit is so dry. That's what you probably think, but I want to show you how moist this is, okay? Look at that. Look how gentle I am. Look how easy it cuts. This is so moist. It's like a sponge. Oh my God. Let's have it. I'm going to show you how moist this is. Mm. Mm. Well, guys, what do you think of this uh, menu? I really like it. It's a beautiful summer menu. I really like to enjoy it with my family or when someone comes over because it's easy. It's not expensive and and it's it's refreshing you know everybody will be happy so let me know write a comment below and tell me again what menu should i create for you thank you so much i'll see you in the next vincenzo's plate video recipe e ora si mangia vincenzo's plate